Hey, Shelvies. Buckle up for a new episode of the Shelved Books Podcast, where every writer is a story that may never see the light of day. This is the podcast where authors share the stories that they shelved, the manuscripts that they may never publish. Then they explore the reason why they shelved this story. Welcome to the Shelved Books Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the ep- new episode of the Shelved Books Podcast. We are your hosts, Katie Van Lisa. Angie Sandro. Christy Berman. Hey, it's a Thursday, and you know what Thursdays are. They are new episodes of the podcast. If you are new here, have you subscribed? Please do so. Uh, we would love that. And always, please ring the notification bell, because if you love this episode, make sure to, if you ring that bell, you will get all the episodes every week as they come out. And then, you know, we have a great backlog for all of you. Um, name the author, and we have been fortunate enough to be able to have them on the podcast. And if they are not on the podcast yet, hey, let us know. Maybe we can um, we can work some magic and have them on. But this week, we have an amazing guest for all of you. He works as an IP paralegal for a biotech company in the Bay Area. He holds a master's in music uh, from Indiana University Jacobs School of Music, which is the first for us. We love our musicians here and perform. He has performed off Broadway, which oh, I want to ask about, by the way. He has sung in many professional choral ensembles. He's a member of the Writer's Grotto and co host of Babylon Salon. His debut novel, All the Right Notes, releases in June 2023. Everybody, welcome to the podcast, Dominic Lim. Yay! Hi, <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> what thank an intro. You for, well, thank you for saying yes. I mean, we are always honors, honored when someone says yes and come to the podcast. You know, we never expect anyone to say yes. Actually. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh, you actually said, oh my gosh, now we have to follow through on that yes. <laughs> but Dominic, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself beyond your bio? Sure. Um, I mean, I yes, so I can expand a little bit on the bio. I My background is in music. I actually went to the Ur- Oberlin, Oberlin College and Conservatory of Music, although I did not finish my degree of music there. I did go on later to get uh, a master's in early music, which sometimes when I say early music, people think uh, like kids, and it's not. It's I, I specialized in Baroque, Renaissance, um medieval even music um i don't do a lot of that now so that's that's a shelved thing that's <laughs> been put on the shelf and i hope to get back to in my life uh because what happened is after college i actually moved to new york city to pursue theater so that's yeah. what i did i did musical theater i also worked there as a professional musician singing in churches uh mostly in catholic churches in the choirs and cantering and uh, i did do a f- few shows most of them were regional theater I you know I I was I did sit downs in in Pittsburgh and Massachusetts and I did do one off-Broadway show that's sort of referenced in my book a little bit but um and then after that I went on to get my degree in music but after my degree I moved back to California and I got into working for a biotech because uh being a musician does not really pay the bills (laughs) so uh I, um, I'd had, when I was in New York, I was always working at a law firm. So, Mm -hmm. uh, as a legal secretary back at the, back in the day, they called it the legal secretary. So, uh, when I wasn't doing shows, I was working at the law firm. And so here I, I just kind of segued into working in-house basically. So I started writing a couple of years ago, um, because I didn't want to do music professionally and, here we are now about you know a few years later and i'm coming out with my first book so it's been quite a strange journey <laughs> very exciting yeah. yeah it is and it's it's amazing because i mean it must have been a huge decision to walk i mean to walk away from a career in music yeah um because i mean if that's what you went into school for and right is something that you were studying it's to the hopes of making it a career right so it's like yeah what was that before we segue into your shell books pro- shell book project it's like what was that decision like to walk away it, from that 
yeah, Kate, you're you're totally right. It was not easy. And 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 taking one step back, it was the result of shelving yet another career because I was pursuing a career in theater in mm -hmm. New York. Yeah. So I decided that I would shelve that in order to go back to grad school to get my music degree. And the reason why I shelved my theater degree is because, you know, this was in the mid 2000s, right? So I was, I'm Filipino, I'm Asian American. I'm not a dancer, dancer. So my my ability to get roles in New York were very, very limited. I'm also not, you know, 5'11". So I'm short, I'm Asian, I don't dance. Uh, I can sing, I'm a very good singer, that's what I do, but I had to put it aside because there's really, I reached a ceiling and there is nothing I could do about it. So I decided to go into music. And then the reason why I shelved the music was I, you know, the, the reasons are complicated. I think that when I saw what I needed to do in order to cobble together a, a life for myself, which meant that I would have to teach, I would have to, you know, sing in a lot of different ensembles and churches. And, you know, I'd have to travel around and, and it, it didn't, the reason why I wanted to do it instantly evaporated, which is that I loved to sing and I loved to perform and if I had to, I knew that doing that would would diminish my love for the art. So I decided to go into a, a life where I could have just a day job and then pursue arts at night or on the weekends and have it be for fun. And so that's what I did and I continue to do. So, nice. yeah. Yeah, and, and it's good to hear about that because, you know, I mean, like they say in writing, it's like never quit your day job. So yes. quit your day job, right? But at the same time, it's like it's a very real because I think like if you watch the Hollywood movies of like this singer, entrepreneur, whoever goes mm -hmm. to Hollywood to pursue mm -hmm. a dream and you know, and it it doesn't always isn't always like that. It's like oh my gosh. The, it's rarely the, like that. Yes. Yeah. So the, the decisions must have been so hard to make, especially yeah. if it's yeah. something that you love. Yeah, I, it did. And and there was a period when I, it, this is right when I first met my uh, boyfriend at the time, he's now my husband, but we were going through a rough patch, not together, but uh, because of me, because I was basically going through like a, an early midlife crisis. I was, I had spent my life pursuing these two things and I didn't know what I was going to do. And I remember we were sitting there and I, I don't, I didn't think I was going to talk about this, but uh, <laughs> we were sitting there in the therapist's office and she said, is there anything else that you like to do? You know? And I, I said, I'd like to write, but I never, I never considered it as anything I'd ever be successful in or have a career in or make money from. And, you know, and she said, it, that doesn't matter. You know, you, you love music, you love the theater. If you love writing, why don't you try that too? So so I did. And it's great. It's great advice, right? Because look what happened. Yeah, <laughs> third, to be. third time's a charm. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Right. You know, I love that. That's yeah. great, though, because it means that like, you're not stuck in one career, you know, like yeah. you, you can move around, you can change your mind, you can be successful other places. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah, incorporate what you love about music into your book and yes. share part of yourself that you, I mean, those experiences you never, I mean, you still had those experiences on the Broadway. And exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Everything. I, I really, I don't know if I believe in fate, fate, but I do believe that things happen for a reason. And I know that everything that I did in my life led up to this, this mm -hmm. moment. Um, it's, oh. and it isn't just music. I mean, I know it says all the right notes, but a lot of, a lot of my musical theater and theater background is also in this book. So oh. it's just, yeah. Oh my God, it, I'm getting chills. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes in and we got the goosebumps going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why. I'm really it's sorry. beautiful. See, oh. this is why we love this podcast so much. Yeah. It's, it's because, you know, you, it's, it's, it's the stories that lead you towards what yeah. you are doing mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And and we've discovered that with so many writers that we have talked to. I mean, uh, you know, with even with Eloisa James, if mm -hmm. you know, if you go back to that episode, it's because her partner she comes from a writing background. Like both her parents are uh -huh. into writing, but she never really thought of it, thought of it as like, I'm gonna write. It came from her partner who said, oh, how interesting. you should write. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. it comes from an outside source. Yeah. And like you, 
your therapist said, why not? And yeah. here you are, right? Why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's and almost like a... sometimes... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go, go, ahead. ahead. Go, go ahead, Christine. No, go ahead, it, Christine. It, sometimes it's almost like you need somebody to give you permission, you know? Like yeah. If somebody has to tell you, like, you can do this. You know, it's, it's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I remember I was... um contemplating a decision to start moving my creative energy into writing and my best friend of 35 years she's the first person I ever came out to in eighth grade um I was having dinner at her house and she said you know I've you know I've, I've been with you my whole life I've seen you you know sing and do theater and she said if you want to write do it but um don't want to don't do it for the money, she said. She said, because she saw me, she saw me struggle. And she said, you know, if that's the reason why you're going to do it, then don't do it. But if you find that if you love it, then that's the reason why. And it's that stayed with me till this day, because I, it's great to get, get a check. It's great to get um, people saying that they like your book, but there's nothing more wonderful than writing something and then just looking at it and reading it and going, wow, I, I wrote that, like just yeah. being proud of what you produced. That's, mm -hmm. that's the most thrilling thing to me as a writer is just that pride in having created something. Love um, it. Yeah. yeah. It, that's so it, true too. True. If you're doing it for just for the money is just not, doesn't, yeah. I don't think it feels the same. It's just, mm -mm. No. <laughs> no and, and sometimes you you then end up with reality versus expectation and it, yes. and it hurts it really does it really uh, hurts, it really it hurts. hurts. <laughs> so you know that meme it hurts um but <laughs> yeah because when you it it's just yeah it's like i think anything in the creative field mm -hmm. um especially whether music painting writing you shouldn't do it for the money because, yeah. you know, because if it's, if that's the case, then it doesn't come most of the time. Yeah. And I, I think it's hard for us when we're young and we see, like we read the most amazing books. We, we watch the, the biggest stars on TV and movies. And we, we all have this in our head, like, that's that's what we can all do and there and there's nothing saying that we can't but there's mm -hmm. really no in between <laughs> you know yeah. it's either like you hit it big or <laughs> you're you're kind of toiling away you know you know just trying to make things men's make ends meet so this middle ground this middle class middle class of creative workers doesn't exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. exist <laughs> I like that <laughs> actually, that's like yeah. the first time that someone has actually like referenced it that way but I'm pretty sure everybody's listening and everybody that's watching gets it. Yeah. <laughs> they get it. They know what it means. And so speaking of toiling away, what is the shelf book or shelf project that you would like to share with us? Yeah. So um, I think I can, I feel like I can answer that question in several ways. One is that um, when I, as I was writing, First of all, I had no idea I was going to write a romance novel. It's just whatever came out of me. Um, in fact, this this book itself is um, a shelf book because what I was doing in the beginning is I was really following like a very literary tradition. And a lot of the stuff that I was writing was were literary short stories. I was placing them in, in literary magazines. And one of them was a short story um, that I was determined to turn into a novel. And it was about um, it was about a pianist, and uh, the last few seconds on, <laughs> and this is, has nothing to do with this book. It was it's during a terrorist attack, oh, no. and it is the last seconds that he experiences before the bomb before the bomb goes off, and then everything hits. So you know how time slows down. And so everything just ticks, ticks, ticks very, very slowly. And so you have this whole interiority of what's going on between the the ticking of the of what happens. Anyway, I kept trying to extend this into a book. I think probably you can understand why there really wasn't much there to extend it to an entire <laughs> book. But <laughs> I was really focused on this character and this his love for basically his lover is in the audience is what happens, and he's seeing what's happening in the audience. So I took that, the core of that, that this he's a musician and a pianist, and that his love for 
you know, someone. And I basically rebuilt an entire new story out of it. And I was thinking, you know, I do like writing literary stories that are very, you know, deep and they make you think. And but I'm not actually like that in person. <laughs> I'm kind of a really <laughs> dorky, weird person. So I was like, let me just write the story that I want to read or that I wanted to read, you know, in my 20s or 30s. And um, I changed it. I completely changed it. And and in the back of my head, I knew I wanted to write a story that spoke to me as someone who, when I was growing up, I was always seeking out stories about uh, gay stories where I could find myself. But I was always also trying to find myself in stories about Asian Americans, Filipinos, Filipino Americans, but never the but never the two shall meet really. <laughs> and also never the two shall meet in terms of um, gay stories when I was growing up and happy endings. Oh. You know, because they're always so rooted in this tradition of of you know of trauma, of fighting, of 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 being erased or whatever. And I was like, why can't we just have a fun gay love story where our people exist, people of color, people who are queer, people who are trans and non-binary, but that's not, that has nothing to do with the conflict at hand. Yeah, it just see. is. Yeah, and nice. the conflict is I have to reunite with my long lost, you know, love from high school. Like that's it. Like that's uh -huh. the conflict. Uh -huh. So we can all, that's what, what books are for, right? That helps us yes. to imagine a better world and to live mm -hmm. in, especially at the time during the pandemic when we all really needed to find a world where we can be happy, you know, <laughs> instead true. of what's going on outside our door. So yeah. that this itself is a shell pro project um, and it is now no longer. And I do have Ooh. two other ones. The reason why I haven't, touch them is because one is a y is a ya story mm -hmm. i love i love comic books i'm a big comic yes. book geek i'm a big i see you have star trek in the in your background angie I'm a big star <laughs> trek person uh comic books superhero movies science fiction fantasy i do have um a ya novel that is on the shelf it is ready to go in terms of an outline but um and it's about a it's not a dystopian future, but it is a future where, and this was years ago that I, I came up with it, where, you know, AI, uh, not AI, it, it's not sentient, but it is sort of like chat GPT, where everything is ex just, information is just kind of shunted into this one repository. And everyone just comes to accept it um, and just know that because it, it just makes life better in so many different ways. That's actually not the thing. It's not about that, but it's about the fact that it becomes really good at predicting things. And mm -hmm. so it predicts that there is this one girl who is is going to save other people. It's basically, you know, your typical YA, like the chosen one. Yeah. <laughs> but but my, little, my little twist on it is that um, I wanted to write a book about someone who enables others and that their power really is to let others flourish because that mm -hmm. I love that about those are my chosen family tend to be those kinds of people who who help to support and lift up other people. So her power or whatever is to unlock certain gifts in other people. So, and no, it's not that. truly, it, you, you know, you can't fly and you can't whatever, but you can maybe run faster, you can think better, you can. And so this is her, um, you know, ability to support people. That's on the shelf. I'm going to make it happen at some point. <laughs> I was gonna say, Go don't knock start. a dystopian like chosen one YA because yeah, you know, a, <laughs> a lot of them are very good. <laughs> have you those started writing yet, or is it just an outline? Right? It's just an outline. Those are outlines, and I do have an outline for a literary novel as well that takes place in three different timelines: oh. um, one in the '80s, one in present, and then one in the future about um, a, a Filipino family, and you know their. Um, and because I work at a biotech company, the last one is about bio and how people have now become bioengineered, but are also able to, you know, choose the traits of their children. So oh, what wow. happens when you're able to, are you you're able to turn off what makes someone queer or, oh. you know, so people start to trying to make that decision for their families. And in the beginning, it's about an immigrant couple from the Philippines moving to the U.S. for the first time making their life here 
uh, but they get entangled. <laughs> it's going to sound very romance. They get entangled with a, a, a choir director, and it's a sort of strange enough. It's going to be like a love triangle, mm -hmm. like between the because the husband and wife are not getting along. But none of a sudden, there's this other person that they're actually both attracted to. Mm -hmm. So it's this like love triangle. Very anyway, it's it's still it's still Don't an outline more. form. <laughs> like, Donnie, like, I know we're talking we're talking about your debut book, but I can't wait for those two. Like, when are those coming out? Come on! It's, it's like uh, uh, by the way, it's um uh, for the for the dystopian. It's just it's, I just want to put it out there where because hmm. she it's, she enables right she enables yeah. people. Right? Yeah. So what if I'm just putting this what if out there? What <laughs> if she, what if she accidentally enables the, this one person yeah. who ends up who basically ends up ending the world? You know? Right. Yeah. That, yes. one, that one person. That it's one like, person. It doesn't mean it, it didn't, right. It didn't mean for it to happen, but. She enabled the bad guy. You know? I know. That's such a great idea. Right? And so I, now, I had something like that in my head too. To, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah so that's now, great. So now she has to sort of undo. Undo. The right. Enabling, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, 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 you guys. Yeah. yeah you guys. <laughs> oh, it's happening. No. It's happening right now. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, when your agent listens to this, it's like, Dominic. <laughs> Right now, I can sell okay. this right now. Come on, you know? we just don't want the book. We want the Netflix series. Yeah, right. series. yeah I'm already picturing um, in my head, Joe. That's right. Yeah, it's like because it because it has like sort of like minority report. Yeah, yeah. Needs, but at the same time, it has this like positive twist to it because it's like she's enabling but and at it, the that's same the time, main thing for me yeah yeah but yeah. at the same time you can also idea. accidentally enable a bad guy okay. <laughs> you yeah. never know powers can go both ways you can use yeah your yeah, you yeah. Can totally. have but then at the end of the day it's like so how do you make this bad guy into positive you know it's kind of yeah like, yeah it's like, it's frozen oh my god i'm so excited where's my notebook <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're really so, excited to see what you come up with because we'll we'll be right there tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be right there. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. We we actually it's like we have prided ourselves into trying to convince authors to resurrect right. self projects. That's and right. Only out of selfishness because we want to, <laughs> we want to read it. We do. Yes, we definitely. Yeah, because we, we really, really want to. Want to. And of That's course, right. there are, there are times where we are successful, and there are times where we're like, it's never gonna see the light. Of day. <laughs> and we're like, That's <laughs> great. <laughs> Oh, but I, I know we're talking about this the literary story. one too. I mean, yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's oh no, the other one's awesome too. But yeah, yeah. I, I want to go. I, I, I want to go. I want to go back to like more like shelving and and how it made you feel. And I want to know, like you were writing articles before you actually wrote the book, right? Short stories. Yeah, short stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Short stories. Story. Yeah. And so, and you were publishing them. Yeah, in like online literary literary magazines. That was sort of my goal, you know, just to get into like the really great literary magazines and then build my way up to like a literary novel basically. So what yeah. I'm getting to is like how like did you get a lot of rejections? How did that make you feel? And what made you pick up the pen once more like after mm -hmm. your rejections? Like what made you say like I'm not stopping? Yeah. Um I okay, I'm going to say it this way and then I'll I'll, I'll you'll understand why. I didn't get a lot of rejections. Because I, <laughs> because I was pitching the, but pitching the stories to like basically anyone who wanted a story. You know, it was just like <laughs> literary magazines where they're like, "We're just starting. Send us your story. We will publish it." <laughs> because you know, I I was young. I was I had an imposter syndrome. I was like, my stories suck. You know, um, you know, those were the for the first two or three, and then I started to really you know, pitch to slightly bigger magazines. But, you know, Christine, I, if I could give my, if I could give advice to my, you know, younger self, 10 years younger or whatever, I would, I would have said, shoot for the stars, because I was doing this thing where I was like, writing a story, and then just finding like, just the right, un, like, level, you know, right below it to try to pitch to just so that I wouldn't get a rejection. And right. the thing is, it's so dumb, you know, you, I mean, I, I don't want to say it's dumb. I, it, my feelings were valid that I, I didn't want to feel rejected, but mm -hmm. and I would rather just get a quick 
you know, acceptance, yeah. but you know, you can't really advance in life if you don't want to put yourself out there. And, and so, but I did learn because when I, you know, when I queried my novel, I, I went all out and then I queried all the agents that I, I really wanted to query. And we, you know, sent it out to all the publishers we really wanted. And I asked for blurbs from all the most famous people, none of which I got, but <laughs> <laughs> like literally nothing. So, but anyway, sorry to come back to, to your question is, uh, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> it's like when, once you like, what makes you pick up the pen, you know, like, cause I know a lot of times you just, and I get the, the wanting to be successful thing. Like, I think it actually builds up your, your, it boosts it does. your confidence a little bit yeah. and you kind of need some of that because sometimes That's the rejections true. can be really, but what, after a big rejection, like I'm sure you got rejected by some yeah, agents that you really yeah, wanted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with all of that? I did get rejected and I get rejected from my stories and from the queries and everything. Um, so that comes from a thick skin of being an actor. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was really when I was doing shows, it's this kind of thing where, I mean, now they have online stuff where you submit your name so that you can, you don't have to wait in line. But when I was in, in New York and I was doing musical theater, I remember, for example, Rent was really big and I was always auditioning for Rent. And you would get up at like five o'clock in the morning, take the subway into the city, get to Chelsea Studios. You're, there's already or whatever, wherever they were doing the audition. And it was already like a line, like three blocks all the way down, you know, the avenue. You get in line and you wait there for hours and hours and hours. And then as soon as you get to the front, you start to hear everyone singing. Right. And of course, these are the best singers like in the city. They're all here to become stars. And it's like one after the other, one after the other. And I mean, that really plays with your head to hear these amazing singers. And yet they're just like, okay, thanks, next. Okay, thanks, next. Okay, thanks, next. And you like, you have eight bars or whatever to 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 do what you're gonna do. And that's how every audition is. The closer you get to the room, the more you can hear how amazing everyone is. And then you get to the front and they say, thank you. And you're gone wow. and you don't get anything. And it's, you really learn to toughen up. And the lesson that I learned from that is it's not that you're not good enough. It's not that you're not talented enough because God only knows every single one of those people in front of you are also amazing. It's just, you're not the person that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And that that is that can be any variety of reasons. It could be you stood in front of them and you reminded them of their ex-wife or ex-boyfriend. So it's like they don't choose you or you're not tall enough for the costume or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with anything that is within <laughs> your control. So when I would write a story or, you know, if I queried an agent and they didn't like the story or the, the manuscript, I, ne I didn't take it personally because wow. it's like, I know that I'm good. I know that I'm talented, but it's not what they were looking for. So I can't control that. I just have to find the person who is looking for what I wrote. That's all. That's good amazing. for you. That's yeah. amazing. This is the first time that we are getting a perspective from someone who's in the performing arts. Yeah. Because um, that's actually true. It's like you, you get there and they're just, Sometimes they just look you up and down and they're like, That's nope. it. And there's you know? nothing. Yeah. You can't, you yeah. can't control it. Yeah. And the, I, you know, I, there's a lot of things that I'm so glad that I had a, per, uh, a performing arts background when I went into writing. Well, that is one of them learning how to deal with rejection. Mm -hmm. the, another is, um, you know, when I joined the writer's grotto, uh, a lot of there's, it's all professional writers and they gave readings or they do events and things. And when I first joined, this was pre pandemic or this was, yeah, this is when we were, sorry, when we were first coming out of the pandemic and I was attending as many readings as I could, you know, going to their events, going to wherever they're showing up. And people are like, wow, you're, you're everywhere. Like you're, you're, you're always supporting people. And I'm like, I, that's just how, we musicians are, for example, musicians, when I was <clears throat> in the conservatory, you attended everyone's recitals, you, att you went to all the studios, you went to all the concerts, because performing is a community, you don't just like perform in a vacuum, you depend on, even if it's soloist, you depend on your pianist, mm -hmm. you know, so you support everyone that's, that is your colleague. 
And we as writers, we don't necessarily have that background because we come from just sitting in front of our desk and writing our thing and then finding some way to make a community later. But uh, coming from the mu mu musical world, the community is there from the, the beginning. And the other thing too is from a theatrical background, I learned how to read in front of a, a, an audience. You know, I, we've all been to readings where someone gets up there and it's like, what? <laughs> or like, <laughs> this is boring. It's like, you know, you're not doing yourself any favors. But the thing is, most writers don't have that kind of experience reading in front of an audience or being, and so many of them have debilitating stage fright because they don't have the experience and it's like honey just get me out on stage i am ready to go at any minute you know get, where's my light you know <laughs> so, so know, yeah is, that, your book, is your book coming out on audio and are you doing the voiceover <laughs> oh my god i have a great do you want to hear a great story okay, okay i'm going to tell you a story right now okay so about four weeks ago my the producer i've been waiting the producer of my audiobook finally reached out to me on email and said Hi, these are, we have your two finalists for your audiobook. I was like, great. And one of them is, I'm not going to say his name, but he's he's Filipino. He was the narrator for probably the most famous queer rom-com of all time. And he's had like 24 Audis. I mean, and I listened to his thing and it was like the most perfect, beautiful, you know, audition I'd ever heard. And then she said, and here's another one. He's never done an audiobook, um, but he's got talent. And uh, he's a Broadway actor. He's in the cast of Hamilton. And he says he knows you. And I looked at the thing and I was like, Aaron Albano, we did Miss Saigon together like 20 years ago. <laughs> and so um, she said, yeah, we re randomly reached out to him. He didn't audition, but he was someone that someone knew. So we reached out to him. He auditioned. We liked it. So can you pick? And I said, OK, well, we have this, you know, the person is going to like knock it out of the park or this other person who, by the way, when I was writing the book in my head, when people, you know how people write a book and they cast it as a movie, like, oh, I'm going to have like, you know, George Clooney be this person or whatever. In my head, I was casting it as a musical because it's basically a musical. Oh. And the person I cast as the main character, Quito, was Aaron Albano, who's oh. the person they reached out to. Yeah. Yeah. And when I told the producer, I called her, I was like, Elise. So I have to tell you this story and she just flipped and she she's like in my years and years and years and years she just because she said when I heard this kid and he's not a kid he means like my age but she said I knew there was just something special about him and I knew it was going to I I was scared because I I was going to try to have to convince you to go with this complete unknown over this you know total star and I was like you don't have to convince me I'm in like Aaron's got it so He's doing it. He's going to be singing in it because he played King George in like Hamilton oh. on Broadway. So, That's yeah, it's going to be. An, yeah, I know. <laughs> you manifested that into life. You I, did. <laughs> I did. Oh, I got his audiobook. You can <laughs> yeah. hear your book. <laughs> yeah. I swear. It's like get the hardback for, for, for display purposes and then the yeah. audiobook. For yeah. like, enjoy, That's right. You know? In the oh, background. Okay. Yeah, the audiobook. That is yeah. so cool. That is so cool. Yeah, so if you're listening out there, you have to get the audiobook. It's going to be <laughs> bonkers. So good. Oh, it, it's, it, I, I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's really cool because, like you were saying, like we all write books thinking like, oh, you know who would be the perfect person for this? Like this person. You actually get actually to listen it. to your book. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, you get the voice, you get everything. That's so cool. <laughs> I love that part. I, it, I, we, it's just, it makes us even more excited for this book and it, it it's just to to know that that is the origin of that is it just makes you believe in magic just i know, you know? So, totally yeah and the funny thing is i so i went to new i i go peter and i go to new york about once a year to see not during the pandemic but <laughs> Uh, we go once a month, once a year to go see our friends and to see a bunch of shows. Like we go, you know, show, 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 show over like three days. It's kind of crazy. But we went and I saw Aaron, like after he was done with his, with Hamilton, he kind of had, you know, stopped by for dinner. And it's funny, people are like, you guys actually look the same. 
because he has he also has like sort of a mohawk with shaved hair he's filipino he's around my height so it's like which i didn't i honest to god i did not think about that when i was casting him but they're like you know you guys kind of look alike right it's like, okay this is too weird now <laughs> yeah i love that yeah yeah awesome. it's like if you were gonna tr entrust someone with your work i think you know he yeah. would oh Oh, hands down. I mean, I, 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 it's. I, I don't even think you had to think about it twice, right? No, I didn't. <laughs> and there are times when there, the, he was like, "How do you want me to?" Uh, no, I don't. If you want a pronunciation, fine, but it's. I don't even want to. Like, I a hundred percent trust you in every oh. decision you're gonna make. So love it. I love that. I love that. It, it, Meant it, to it, be. Yes, One it is. Thing you have to worry about too. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Because it's like, it, of course, you know, it's like. Um, having the book be published, that's one. But then also having an audio book come with yeah. it, that's another. Because it's a diff it's a whole different experience to be listening to the your words as opposed to just having having it having read it, like reading it um, and and uh, listening to the narrator in your head. But to actually have someone like, yeah speak the speak the words that you've written, it's like. Oh, it is that's cool. weird too, but yeah <laughs> i'm sorry it's actually it's just i'm just so excited i just want i just want this audio book right you want it book i'm really now. excited right now right now i need it's it coming. all i get from this story is the next book i write i'm going to picture keanu reeves now <laughs> <laughs> make it happen yes manifest <laughs> yes manifest. It's, it's true you know i am a Phew. believer of, of manifestation because um, and, and this also goes for negative. It's like yeah, what you're totally. thinking, whether it's positive or negative, does can come to life, which is why always try to treat it in the positive because you don't want to like attract that negative. Yeah, thank you for that reminder. I that because I tend to do that too sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like focus on negative and it's like, yeah, no, don't even don't yeah. even think it. Yeah. yeah, because it's very natural. It's very natural. I mean it's nat because, human nature. Yes, mm -hmm. because it's like, you know as I think writers more than usual do question ourselves more yeah. because mm -hmm. um, especially when moving forward like after because here's the thing is like there's this carefreeness that comes with a debut but it's like moving forward oh, yeah. there is also that different aspect because now you know how the sausage is made Yep. And at the same time, it's already going, it's no longer yours. It's going to be I know. out into the world and, and you no longer own this thing that you have created. And it's going to be some, it's going to be someone else's. It's going to affect someone else's life. Yeah. So now it's sort of like, it sort of influences the next step of your journey. Yeah. And so sometimes it can amplify <laughs> those voices of like I'm yeah right. and that's what i'm finding with the second book is because i have a, I, it's a two book contract with forever so mm -hmm. what i didn't realize is that the second book would be coming out a year after the first yes. i mean they're fast mm -hmm. yeah. i had no clue and so um i've been spending a lot of the past weeks like you know getting up at at 5 30 to write before work and then work working and like writing for two more hours afterward i didn't you know that's how it is with your first book right you have so much time no one's mm -hmm. waiting for it and um on the second book not only is there that that time stressor but it's just like you said kate the the there are things that people said in their early reviews that I was like, hmm, do I take that into account for the second book? And I, you really shouldn't, you no. really shouldn't. I mean, <laughs> um, <clears throat> but it's hard to, it's hard, and, and even like the good stuff, you know, where they say, oh, I really enjoyed this. And you're like, oh, I need to make sure that is in the book. But you, mm. again, you really yeah, shouldn't. Yeah. It's, it should yes. be its own thing. I think the only thing that I'm, I am trying to retain from the first book are, the things that I know my editor will say just about, you know, certain things about the way I write or whatever, like tweaks and stuff that I, I'm just going ahead and making ahead of time. But it is hard. It does play with your mind, right? How can it not? So, yeah. and, and, and it's like the more with each book that, that comes out, it, it just, it does amplify that. And, and sometimes 
you know, you have to be able to reach a point where how can I drown that out and mm. go back to the carefree time of, of when I was writing my debut. Um, yeah. When it wasn't even an idea, it wasn't even an, an idea of a debut. It was just something I was writing, you know? So mm. it's like, how can that sounds we... nice. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> how can we get that? It's sometimes it's like, how can we get that back? That yeah. Magic. <laughs> Right? But you have to. You also have to think that even with the bad reviews, which everybody gets, the publisher picked you for a reason. Yes. You know, like yeah. they liked your writing from the beginning. So I know it's hard, but don't change a thing. You're doing great right now. Yeah. So <laughs> keep so. going. It's gonna get easier to write too. Like it'll get easier. Yeah. Too. You'll start being able to separate the negative and just hold on to the positive, and mm. just let the the negative be something. If it's something that you can learn from, mm -hmm. learn mm -hmm. from it. But also set aside the because it's just like with acting, you know, it just maybe yeah. they just didn't like something yeah. that had nothing yeah. to do with it whatsoever. But it's a right. lot easier to focus sometimes on the negative than the positive. It and is, yeah. Hard. It really is hard sometimes. But human nature. Yeah. Look at us being the aunties right here. I know. Thank <laughs> you. I know. I'm <laughs> in. <laughs> You're like, aging us. Like a bajillion good reviews, and then you have that one negative where they oh, say yeah. something like that one thing and you're like oh. forever like you, you can like quote a, i can quote it backwards yeah, yeah. I, know. I know i know i know that oh my god but you know dominic seriously thank you for sharing your story with yeah. us because yes. i think it's like multi-dimensional because you you mm -hmm. are showing us like different aspects of the creative process mm -hmm. coming from mm -hmm perform a performance background and the choices that you have you had to make and still maintain your creativity mm -hmm. in the end because sometimes we ask creatives i have seen creatives that have just left it all behind because I know. Of, it's just too much. yeah it's just yeah. too much you know life can get too much and we all understand yeah. that and to be able to hang on to that and just shift into a different creative avenue but still carrying on what you have learned and the, your performance and all of that into what you're doing now. It's just so beautiful. And thank you so yes. much for sharing thank that you. with us. It's just, we are honored. <laughs> yes. Thank you so, so much. much. We, we, we love it. It's, you see, this is why. It's like you never expect where this, this conversation goes. And we are so grateful that you were open enough to share. I mean, I get like, some decisions were so difficult to make. But at the end of the day, maybe we're glad we made them because we're mm -hmm. here now. And we are glad you made those because now we have all the right notes yeah. that we are looking forward to. And at the same time, the audiobook, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I just, you know I'm buying that. Now I, I don't have to hear the voice. Book. I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. I am not going to use an audible credit. I'm buying it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be a credit. It's going to be an audio. Because, you know, if you are an audiobook listener, you know, you know those, the credits and then the buying of the, yeah. yes, I'm not going right. to use a credit. I'm actually going to buy it. <laughs> Seriously, it's after that story, if you are not dear listener or viewer, Shelby, please go, come on, let's do this. All right? Yeah. Let's support yeah. Dominic because yes. I... We need we need more of his story, and at the same time, I think we didn't we we're, we weren't able to like mention this, but you are definitely creating a window that young boys can look or, or young queer can look mm -hmm. out of and say, "Hey, that's me. Hey, that's mm -hmm. my story," or "Hey, I see myself." Because I think those are that's important because yeah. I think yes, the trauma based stories are important but they're important we need the feel-good stories too yeah there are feel-good love stories in the queer space that need yeah voices and we are so glad that you are one of them and Thank um you. you know it's and, nice and to have just a story you know what i mean yes. like it doesn't need yeah. to be about anything else except yes. that yes. and yeah. that's enough because yes. there are plenty of normal stories out there this is a normal story that's how it should be you know yeah that, and I'm mm -hmm. so glad that we are now living at a time where that is becoming yes. yeah. uh, exactly. that is that is becoming normal and normalized yeah. and mm -hmm. and that uh, a, a young person who's figuring themselves out can pick up and say, Hey, I 
think that's me. Yeah. You know? And and yeah, I look forward good. to the mail that you're gonna get from readers yeah. who say, <laughs> I read your book, I saw myself in your book. Thank you for writing this book. You know, yeah. because we need that. We need those voices because again, underrepresented, under and everything. And I'm, and I think that's why your story led you to this point because you need to write these stories for these individuals who are still finding themselves and yeah. will find themselves in the pages of your book. So yeah, you're making my mascara <laughs> run. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. It's important to say sure. this because <clears throat> I, 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 you know, I can just imagine how that felt growing up looking for an identity that can be reflected back at you and how frustrating that can be where you can't find it. You it, can't it, find it. It's an either or. It's like an either or. And, and even if you find something similar, it's still not the one, right? Mm -hmm. It's just sort of echoing, but not really. And the fact that you wrote all the right notes and the fact that it's out there, I think it was meant to be. Yep. And that it, because if you continued on to singing or on to acting, then we might not have this book. And yep. What about those readers who might have lost something because they weren't able to have access to this book, right? So it's like, yep. you're, you're right. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason, and this is the reason. Yep. Thank you. And, you this and I am, I'm just, I needed to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm also wearing mascara, and I don't want to. Uh, make <laughs> okay. I specifically so didn't now, wear mascara for that yeah. reason. So now... Let us shift gears, and okay. I will now throw it to Christy and her 10 speed round questions. Christy, take it away. Thank you, Kate. These are very simple. Top of your head answers can be one word, paragraph, a page, you know, whatever <laughs> like you feel like. We're okay. good with it. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. On a night out with friends, are you the first one to go home or the last one to leave? Oh, these days I'm the first. Ooh. <laughs> Old age. Yeah, I, I know where you're coming from. <laughs> Which day of the week is your favorite? Oh, um, Friday, because that's when me and Peter, like, uh, we always uh, um, have our cocktails, order takeout, and watch Golden Girls. Oh, <laughs> Golden Girls, that's why you're- Well, cop. among other, yeah, Golden Girls and Abbott Elementary <laughs> and just a whole bunch of like fun, like little, you know, fun things that we watch. I adore Golden Girls. Yeah. Best writing ever. Best. If some, yeah. If someone were to take a candid picture of you at any moment, what would you most probably be doing? Um, laughing, smiling. Yeah. Hmm. I love that answer. <laughs> Good for you. Would you rather be the hero or the sidekick? Oh, um, the hero. Because mm -hmm. we don't have enough Filipino heroes. Oh, even better yeah. answer. Mm -hmm. Do you consider that you have wanderlust or are you a homebody? Oh, that's a good question because I love being home, but um, like, I really love it. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> People, am I right? Yeah, but I, um, but I also love to travel and, and that's probably mostly because of my husband, Peter, because he's, he's a big traveler and he's now hooked me onto just going all around the world. So I love that. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Number six is, if you're having a bad day, what's your go-to song to shake it off? Oh, um, uh, it would be Get Into the Groove by Madonna. That's like my first like fun dance song from my life. And it's, it's always been like my happy song. That's a very good one. I like that. What is your least favorite part of writing? Um, the least favorite part of writing would be be the first draft <laughs> mm -hmm. i yeah. love revising like i love 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 revising i love it i hate like the the first draft but yeah. i'm probably not especially that draft. middle part where it's like all muddled and you're not yeah. sure yeah <laughs> yeah do you consider yourself a good cook yes i do i love to cook i am the cook in our household and my siblings and my mother also I'll love to cook. Well, my sister doesn't. <laughs> but my <laughs> brothers do. 
<laughs> Very nice. Now here's for your nerdy part. On a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest rating, how sure are you that aliens exist? Oh, oh, they, they I think they exist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Are, are we going Why to are you ten? Asking? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll I'll answer it. I'm a ten, so <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Is oh, that is fine. that like we really believe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Okay. I just I don't know if we've seen them yet. Actually, right. that's my thing. Yes, but they're out right. there. There's yeah. a billion stars. Or like, I mean, more than a billion yeah, stars. Yeah, I mean, you know, what are the odds? Yeah, Obviously. they might look like a rock, but they exist. Right. <laughs> and last question, which is the most academic, analytical, you know, like all that really heavy stuff is, is your bed made right now? Oh, no, it's Saturday, <laughs> so it's not. <laughs> Thank you so much for answering those. Amazing. Oh, my God. So, Shelby, are you a believer? Are you a believer of uh, things out there? Let me just unzip and show you right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Men in black. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm an alien all the time. Um, so really, what are your answers to, to Chrissy's speed around questions? Are they the same as Dominic's? Please let us know in the comments down below. We would love to hear about what you think and uh, what you are sharing. And at the same time, are you excited for all the right notes? Because we are. We definitely are, and we are so honored to have Dominic with us today sharing his story and his Shell Book project. So, Dominic, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me at my website on Dominic at dominiclim.com. And I'm also <clears throat> pretty active on Instagram at jdominiclim and also on Twitter at... <laughs> I always have to apologize for this. J underscore Dominic underscore Lim. <laughs> Y'all, come on. Can you just give me my name? It's just like, uh, anyway, I'm there. You can find me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always say start with the website and then yeah. the toggles are there. Just click they're they're there. You can find me. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and Dominic has a great website, by the way. So please oh, thank go you. and visit. And at the same time, so Dominic, I mean, you've already hinted at it, but what are you working on now that we can look forward to? Yeah, um, my second book is called Karaoke Queen. <gasps> it is about a reformed drag queen who, uh, he no longer does drag because he kind of said, I'm going to reject that feminine side of myself. And then runs into an old flame who is now a bartender at a failing bar. So he has this idea to save the bar by putting on a karaoke night, but then realizes he needs to host it, but as the, his old drag queen persona. So it's this sort of like comedy of errors where he has to not let his boyfriend know that he's the drag queen. So he has to kind of be in two places at once. <laughs> so it's kind of like Tootsie meets Kinky Boots, basically. Oh my God. Yeah. Awesome <laughs> idea. <laughs> Oh That's my funny. God, Dominic. I mean, like let's job. let's forget about all talk of 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 um, doubts and all of that. We need this book right now. <laughs> I've um, got a, a bunch of books to write. Come on, it's uh, come on. It, we look. You know what? I feel like in five years, the three of us are going to be able to say. We knew him when like, we interviewed him for <laughs> his debut. Like, but look at him now. Don't forget us. Right? You know, don't forget us. Your aunties right here. Just don't forget <laughs> it. Um, you know, it's it's. We are here at, in any capacity, positive capacity <laughs> that you might need, and this is recorded, so it can always be uh, looked back to. You know, and and and. Um, but I can yes, hold you to it. Yes, <laughs> and uh, you have found fans in us. You have found friends in us, yeah. and you know we do love to amplify. The voices, important, important voices that, you know, can reach multitudes. And we are just so genuinely happy and excited for your career and uh, what it holds next. I mean, come on, Netflix. Let's go. Let's, <laughs> um, yeah, let's yeah. Give, give us a call. <laughs> you know, give Dominic a call, you know. <laughs> um, and really, thank you so much for joining us. It was such a great conversation. Nice. It's been an honor and a pleasure. It Thank you so much. Fun. We are just, whew, this is a good start to our week. Because we usually film this in the weekend there, that's the behind the scenes of it. But this is a great start to the weekend because this is a Thursday episode of the podcast. 
dear Shelby, if you haven't subscribed yet, why would you see? <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, I mean, take us on your walks. Put us on the background while you're doing your chores. Maybe recommend us to a writer in your life that you know that uh, might need the boost. You know, we are always, always happy to provide that because, again, this is an aspect of the Shell Books projects are usually an aspect of publishing that we, that are not necessarily discussed in the publishing space because sometimes it is seen as a failure when we have discovered in 50 episodes going on now that it is not. It is never a failure because one, you can always come back to it. Two, it was great practice for when you do write that novel, mm -hmm story, song, whatever, that finally makes it um, out of the shelves and into the hearts of everybody, which I believe all the right notes will make it into the hearts of everybody. So again, thank Dominic, thank you for joining us. And remember, everybody, we are your hosts, Kate Evangelista. Angie Sandro. Christy Berman. And remember, keep on writing. Bye. 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 Thank you, Dominic. And that was another episode of the Shelved Books Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Till the next one, stay safe, read more, write more, and continue to be at your creative best. The world is waiting, and so are we.